Good afternoon. Welcome to today's webinar event. It's promptly 2 p.m. Eastern Time. My name is Joshua and I'm going to be your presenter today. We're here to talk about accounts receivable for Church Windows Accounting. So just a, a few things before we get started here. Uh, hopefully everyone can hear me okay. Um, but we're going to be work together for the next 20 minutes or so. Um, I'm going to finish up whatever I'm discussing at 20 minutes after out of respect for your time that you're taking out of your day to spend with us. Uh, if you have questions, please type those into the questions portion of the webinar control panel there. I'll try to do my best to keep an eye on that and see what we can't do to get those answered for you. Um, the, um, the, uh, our, um, so in any case, I'll try to keep my eye on the questions here. If you do have those, I may or may not be able to get to those till the very end of the event. But if so, I'll definitely get to the questions, repeat them for everyone's benefit, and then uh, and we'll see what we can't do to get those answered. Uh, a, vid a video of today's webinar event will be on our website here between now and this coming Friday. Um, so if you'd like a review or an overview of it again to review the overview, you can find that on the churchwindows.com website uh, here between now and the end of the week. Finally, and this is probably the most important thing about this particular day's event, is this is literally, folks, just a bells and whistles demo event or overview of accounts receivable. I'm not going into any detail in terms of the setup of the actual module or the portion of the add-on for the module whatsoever, okay? This is literally, as described, just an overview. So again, I'm not going to really go into any detail about adding clients or anything like that. It's going to be literally just going through it very quickly. So if you're looking for detail, then this is not the event for you, okay? Just want to make sure we're clear about that, okay? All right, so let's go into accounting. Um, and the first thing we like to talk about about this is accounts receivable is not an automatic, is not included as part of the default accounting installation. When we provide you with your license key for uh, church windows accounting, accounts receivable is not included in that. It is an add-on for that, for the software, okay? So I'm not sure exactly what the add-on cost is to that. There's no additional change or charge to your support for accounting on that. But accounts receivable for most folks will show up here at the very top and it'll have like a, it'll show up there, but I, I forget what the icon looks like, but it won't be the regular accounts receivable icon, okay? Once you click on that, it'll open up and it'll say, hey, do you have an accounts receivable license key? Once you've purchased that from us, then we'll, you can go ahead and add that and accounts receivable is enabled for you. Okay, now I, I can't show it to you today because I do have it enabled, okay? But it is a license key that is added or entered separately from the regular accounting. For so many of you may be aware, of course, so forgive me if I'm overstating, you know, or reiterating basic accounting practices or basic accounting is, it's accounts receivable is the opposite of accounts payable. So instead of amounts and monies that are owed by the church out to various vendors or payees, it is money that would be owed to the church or the organization inbound, okay? So not every one church needs accounts receivable. It's most useful for churches that have like, say, a daycare or a preschool or something, you know, again, not money that's owed through, you know, how churches are owed money and generally in most cases it would, would be through something like donations and pledges. So, you know, that's why accounts receivable is not automatically enabled is because donations takes care of generally anything that we would consider, you know, owed to the church, he said with air quotes, um, money that's owed to the church. Um, but if you do have a, you know, a daycare or a preschool or something where money's coming in or owed to the church from something other than donations, then perhaps you might want to consider looking at the accounts receivable add-on. Accounts receivable, like I said, is the opposite of accounts payable. So instead of money owed out, it's money that's owed in. And when we go into our chart of accounts here, we see on our chart of accounts under our assets, a asset account called accounts receivable slash clients right here. Okay, as everybody should see my highlighter there, and it shows that. Okay, so once we, once we click on the little plus sign here next to accounts receivable, it's going to reveal our current list of clients that we have added or set up in the database. Okay, so these are our we've got a we're we're assuming we've got a preschool here at our church, and these are our half a dozen you know preschool clients that we have already existing. Um, 
when you add on or enable uh, the accounts receivable portion, it says what account asset account number do you want to give to your main ledger account called accounts receivable clients. And then you enter that 100 account number and then you can add your clients to it. Okay, So we could add certainly clients here from the chart of accounts window or you know right here on the tree view just right click over accounts receivable and called add an accounts receivable client or Another common way that it's done is we would go up to manage accounts, accounts plus minus, and right here we've got our AR, accounts receivable clients, right here in the upper left hand corner, right there. Okay? And so when we click on that, it opens up our setup chart of accounts with our main asset receivable account, main ledger account set up here in the upper left, and our current list of clients listed down the left hand side. So then I would simply type in, you know, my whatever my new receivable client name is and simply click add account okay it's that simple so then when we um, once we've added, got our clients added into our system and into our database we're now then ready to well we, there's one more step we do need to also have an income account to receive that receivable income that we're going to be anticipating from our receivable clients okay so in this case now, if we go to man, back into Manage Accounts and we type in preschool, here we've got a preschool tuition income account that will become very important or will receive the income from our preschool uh, when we rec begin recording those invoices from our rec accounts receivable clients. Okay. Once we've got our clients and our income account, we are ready to go. Okay. So we would then go into transactions, accounts receivable, and we'll do invoice accounts receivable. So here then, you know, we would start much like we do with entering bills or paying bills or, you know, doing journal entries or any other transaction type in accounting. We start with our date. Okay, so we're going to say we're going to, we date our invoices for our preschool on the first of each month. And here down here under our AR client, we're going to choose John our new John Doe client. Then down here we would choose our preschool income, tuition income account, and we would enter the amount of the actual preschool invoiced preschool tuition. I can enter comments if I wish, you know, as to what the invoice is for. When I'm ready, I simply click done add to batch or control plus to add it to my unposted receivable invoice batch. Okay? Once I've got those entered, I can simply click post. Okay, I can save it or I can, don't have to. But then now I've recorded it. It's asking me, do I want to print a transaction of a record of this transaction? I'm going to click no on that. I can always go in and print that later. Okay, so I've now recorded the invoice, and now John Doe owes us, or is, you know, his, his child is attending our preschool, and that money is now owed to, um, to the church or to the preschool for that. Okay. Now we can go up to accounts receivable and we could do print invoices. So a couple things about the printing of the invoices. And here we've got, I've, I've gone ahead and recorded some other invoices for our, you know, clients that we have here. And I do have John Doe entered in here amongst our other clients. Oh, but I didn't enter a due date for my, for John's invoice. So I can now cancel out of this, go up to browse. I can find the invoices here really quickly so down here at the bottom I should be able to find there's John's invoice I can correct it and I can enter a due date here if I wish okay so now when I go back to reprinting my invoices again everyone should now have a an, a due date on that so a couple things about the invoices we have a what's called a simple payment or invoice, you know, invoice uh, in here, which is basically set up here. We do have a lot in here from other data, but we have one just called simple invoice. It's a structure and a framework, and it's the one that you know called invoice payment coupon. So assuming that I have that, and I click print, and I'm going to use that. When I click on my print invoices, it opens up a basic invoice that shows the name of the church, the address any phone number it's necessary, an invoice number with an invoice and a due date, any descriptions that I may have entered, and the client name. And then I go down the list, and it goes on to the next invoice client and does the same thing.
yeah, I would probably want to enter something under the description here, you know, preschool tuition for May or, you know, something. Um, again, I can always go back in and correct that if necessary. Okay. And I can simply send those to my printer and send those out to my clients. Okay. That lets them know, hey, here's how much it's invoiced for you, for your child to attend our preschool, and here's the due date on this. Okay? A couple things about that are we do have an invoice designer. So right here, if you don't like the default layout that ours creates, you can use this invoice designer button right here. And we also have one under called statement designer for the invoice statement that when we click on that, it opens up our report designer and it virtually allows you to edit that, that simple invoice however you wish. Okay, let me get rid of my drawing tool drawings here. Okay, and so again, you've got a similar option under our statement designer for our collecting our, our, our accounts receivable um, statements as opposed to the invoices. Okay, so the assumption then is, you know, and again, this church information, this organization information is taken from our um, system information screen that we have about the church. If you don't like that, you can always click the little pencil and add a different one here. So if we want to go, oh, well, we don't want the church name on there. We want our preschool name. You can add that additional organization information or doing business as. Okay. So when we now begin receiving our payments from our clients, we would go into accounts receivable and click on collect accounts receivable. Okay. So then... You know, we would go up. There's several options here. We could choose a specific client, even those without a balance. We can also go up to Quick Collect and choose, you know, collect invoices entered today, you know, view clients with a balance, or probably most commonly we'll go to the one that's called View Outstanding Invoices. So when we click on that, it now does reveal our list of our clients that we've sent or recorded invoices for, okay? So let's say we want to receive, we've received a check from Robert Mondavi here for his payment for March. So we're going to click on the select box. Oh, we're going to do a couple. So we're going to check two of them. We're going to click the create collection button. And then down here, it records both of these clients with their respective invoices as being now paid. Okay. So starting on the left here, we're going to go, oh yeah, we're, we, you know, we received Robert's check yesterday and we received Bill and Robbins today. So we can have completely different dates on each one of those transactions if we wish. Okay, now keep in mind, this is what it's going to show on our bank reconciliation and accounting. So if I'm not going to take those checks to the bank until tomorrow, maybe I want to make both of these dated, you know, May 10th. Again, just keep in mind, because there's an asset account involved here, these are going to show up on my bank statement as deposits. Okay. So again, with my, you know, if it's going to show up on my bank statement as a single deposit, maybe I do want to make these the same date that I make my deposit at the bank. So we would edit the date, make sure our default asset account is the account, the bank account where the those checks are being deposited. It requires a payment method. So while I can choose check, I can enter those, but it's not required. Okay. So if I want to record those check numbers from those clients, I certainly can do so. They will appear on their statements if I do that. But again, it's not a requirement of the system. Same thing, when I'm done, I would simply click Post. Okay. So it shows the total and asks me, do I want to print those total transactions of those accounts receivable uh, collected transactions that I've recorded? So now when I go up to Quick Collect View Outstanding Invoices, those particular client invoices are, are now marked as paid and are no longer showing. Okay? So, with that in mind, we've got just about a five minutes here left, folks. I'm going to, I've got a few more things to talk about. Uh, again, we're going to get to statements here momentarily. But one of the things I'd like to point out is we, some of you may be looking at this and going, well, wait a minute. Allison Jones, we know she has an invoice recorded with a date occurred of May 1st for $350. Well, why is her account balance showing 500? Well, most likely that commonly occurs from an unpaid balance from a previous period. Okay, and there, I did that deliberately because I want to show you how that unpaid balance will appear on her statement when I send her that um, that statement. Oh, well, it'll also show under my um, my invoices too. Um, 
but again, most commonly it'll show, I mean, that's, you know, if we're going to be sending out our statements, you know, that shows here's how much you've been billed, here's how much you've paid, and here's your remaining balance, okay? So if I click to erase all those, here's my remaining invoices, and I can, again, record those just like I've done here <clears throat> when I've received those checks or those payments, whether it's check or cash, it doesn't matter, um, and I'm ready to record those and take those to the bank, okay? So now let's take a minute and let's look at our statements. So now when we go up to accounts receivable and we go to print statements, just like we had before under our, you know, date range or just like our invoices, we do have a statement designer as opposed to invoice designer. <clears throat> but it asks me now, what period or date range do I want to print for my statement? So in this case, maybe I am going to choose to say, hey, we're going to send out our first quarter statements to our clients. And I simply, once I've entered, edited that date range, I click select date range. And it reveals any vendors or any clients that have an amount. And right here, it clearly shows us. Allison still owes us $150. So I would can do select all if I wish. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I can do select all. Or I can randomly choose whichever, you know, which clients I want to produce a statement for. So we're going to do them all. Again, it's got a simple statement in there. And you can use the statement designer to edit or amend that layout. If you're, there's a portion of the layout that you don't like, you can use that statement designer to change or edit that. Again, choosing the appropriate organization information from the list. And again, dating the statements. You know, so in this case, I'm sending them on May 9th, and maybe I want to leave that. <clears throat> or maybe I want to date them something different. Confirm for them that they are their, those first quarter statements. I can run it for a single client if I wish. But as it is, we're going to go ahead and just click Print. And again, it opens up a very nice, very simple statement that again shows the church name. It would show the client ad name and address here if I did have that entered for them. It shows you know, again, for a phone number to call, what there is there, if there's an amount due or balance owed, and what their statement date is. And it does show a breakdown of each one of the transactions, both the invoice and the payments that I've collected for them throughout the year. And we can clearly see right here, let me maybe zoom in a little bit on Allison's here. There we go. <clears throat> and right here, we can clearly see <clears throat> she, we invoiced her on April, March 1st. She only sent us a payment for $200. Her balance, in fact, is $150 from the first quarter. Okay. So then, again, same thing when we go down to other clients that we have recorded amounts for. Let me get back to my normal drawing tool here. And again, like here for by Becky and Tom Adams, they owe us nothing. Their balance is paid in full. And all of their... <clears throat> their their invoices and their statements are offsetting their balances paid for the first quarter that is I mean that we haven't we're not looking at anything after quarter number one in this particular case but yes as the year goes on of course you know amount due zero you know invoices and payments offset one another for the first quarter their balance is paid um, but <clears throat> as we go throughout the year of course you know this invoice depending on if we run it you know what periods we run it for you know it's going to certainly be get longer. You know, so maybe we do want to continue to, you know, post them or print them uh, for the entire year accumulating. It's really up to you if you want to continue. But logic says if you're, they've got a record of their first quarter's invoices on a separate document, maybe you do want to run or print them by quarter. So here again, we show that they just continue to get longer and longer <clears throat> with each progressive um, invoice and statement period. Um, Folks, there are ways to be able to post a refund to accounts receivable. Um, you know, there are special situations where accounts receivable comes into play. You know, you can post a refund against accounts receivable, you know, posting a transfer from checking to the receivable client, and then <clears throat> posting a, a, uh, an invoice with a credit memo on it. Again, we're not going to go into that today. You can write off an uncollected amount, you know, say for some reason we have to write it off, somebody didn't pay their balance or can't. We need to write that off. Um, or, <clears throat> again, posting a partial payment. You know, those are all special, special situations. Those are covered in the accounts receivable workbook. Um, 
um, but there it is. I mean, that's what we, that's where we've got. So we got about a few seconds here before 20 minutes after. Uh, I'm done with what I'm talking about with regards to this. I don't see any questions coming in yet. If you've, again, seen what you came to see, you can choose the file and leave webinar event. Thank you so much for attending. And again, look for the event to be the video to be on the website site by this coming Friday. Otherwise, I'm going to wait and see if folks are typing in some questions here. Okay, I know that those questions sometimes can be kind of lengthy. I'm not seeing anything coming in yet. It looks like folks are kind of diving out fairly quickly. Um, again, folks, if you are interested in the workbook, <clears throat> thank you, Mary. Um, if you're interested in the workbook, please check out the workbook page on our website. Uh, the, there's a specific book dedicated to accounts receivable, or if you're interested in adding it on, please give us a holler, 800-533-5227, um, or email us at... Uh, support at churchwindows.com. We'll certainly be happy to respond to you that way. Um, but we hope to see you at another Church Windows webinar event. All right, I'll go ahead and end the event for everybody. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Bye-bye.